about pediatric basic life support. So, pediatric from this basic life support to point of view, any child which is between 1 and till you see the signs of secondary sexual characters, we call it as a child, okay, still puberty. So, in pulse, the, all the other parameters remain the same. The differences that are there, I am just highlighting the differences. So, in pulse check, we have the carotid pulse check for such patients and the depth of compression is not at least 5 or 5 to 6 centimeters, but it is approximately 5 centimeters. And when we have more than one rescuer, the compression ventilation ratio changes from 15 is to 2. That's you must remember. Uh, for and coming to the uh, basic life support in an infant, that is less than less than one year. So the pulse check that is recommended is the brachial pulse check because these children have very short neck. So checking up for the carotid could be tough for you. So brachial pulse check is recommended, and the depth is of compression is approximately four. Or you can say 4 centimeters or one third of the AP diameter of the patient. Again, if there is one rescuer, the compression ventilation ratio remains 30 is to 2. And if we have more than one rescuer, the compression ventilation ratio again goes down to 15 is to 2. The technique of chest compression varies here. If we have one rescuer, the chest compressions can be done with the hand of two finger technique. And if we have more than one rescuer, you can encircle the chest like shown here and you can give the compressions by the thumb. It is only based upon the ease of delivering the chest compressions. A word about neonatal resuscitation. This is very important and you have been quizzed in your recent AIMS exam on this. Chest compression rate is not 100 to 120 as opposed to all other that we have seen. It is about 90 per minute. And the compression ventilation ratio is 3 is to 1. Also, an important thing to note is ventilation is most important. As I said, in children, it is a primarily respiratory event which leads on to a cardiac event. And therefore, respiration, ventilation, you have to give 40 to 60 per minute. This was also an exam question in your recent need PG. If we have a pregnant lady who is a victim in cardiac arrest, delivering the baby, delivering the fetus within four to five minutes of by doing an emergency cesarean section is a high priority goal and you can save the child by doing so. All right. Rest of the parameters remains the same. That is you have to push fast, do the chest compressions and rest of the things remain the same. Mark the following statement as true or false regarding CPR. Can be given irrespective of rib fracture. So, I would like to add here that an effective chest compression in fact can cause rib fracture. So, if we have the victim live with us, we can fix the rib fracture. Okay, so that's not a problem. In an adult, chest compression to breath ratio is 30 is to 2. That's correct. Even if two rescuers are available, yes, in an adult, one rescuer, two rescuer does not make any difference. The compression ventilation ratio remains 30 is to 2 because the extensive review of the literature by AHA shows that whenever, if we make the ratio as 15 is to 2, there are a few compressions, a few number of compressions that are required to achieve the previous level of the coronary perfusion pressures. So, they say that 30 is to 2 is a better compression ventilation ratio and it leads to enhanced chances of survival of the victim. Infant ratio changes from 30 is to 2 to 15 is to 2 when a second rescuer arrives. That's also correct. Okay, we have seen all these are true. Chest compression at the rate of 100 to 120 per minute in an adult, that's correct, and 90 per minute in an infant and a neonate. So, 90 per minute in a neonate is correct, but in an infant, that's not correct. So, that's false. So, you can see here how 
minutely you have been quizzed on this. If AED is available, give alternatingly defibrillation and chest compressions every 3 minutes. So, is it correct? Is it every 3 minutes? I think it is every 2 minutes. You have to do it every 2 minutes or 5 cycles of compression ventilation, ok. 5 cycles of CPR, ok. So, that is also false. So, I hope so. After reading this session, you will not have to check your results like this and we will break for a short break here. Thank you.